click. Boom. The armored catfish. I love catfish. Mmm, that's so good. Some sort of bigger birds just clamoring around in the treetops. I don't know what they're up to. Must be some sort of seed or something up there that they're hopping around from one of these palms to the next, just banging around. Heard a good number of splashes and stuff. The gar munching on something, landing on the surface or whatever, and then uh, I heard maybe a an armadillo or two, like crossing back through there. Like, they're kind of scavenging around for grubs and bugs, probably just on the surface of the ground. What to do first? I think need to make some coffee. Yeah. It's cold enough a sweatshirt, it's gonna be uh, kinda nice. I have never experienced Florida like this. Like, never, ever, in the last, how many times have I been down now? Two? The Everglades. Um, trip that we did. I like it. Sweatshirt weather in Florida. <laughs> it's so easy getting a fire here. It's, it's so much stuff. Maybe were it raining, that'd be different, but. Bug free and fairly clean, that'll do. In a lot of ways, this part of Florida really reminds me of Texas, minus the, there's no the, no palms there. At least not where I was at Bob's back in the day. But the ground, the air feel, the smell, the, you know, the wildness of it, it's nothing. The southern states and their wildness is nothing like up north. It's it's completely different feel, completely different texture with all the little bits of stuff growing on everything, like the little ferns growing out of other trees the way they are, and the mosses, the, the Spanish moss, and the... night trying to go like how to how to build this place out a little bit a little bit of a table the prevailing wind seems to be going that way if I put a table right here off of this palm use the palm as one of the sidebars for it to keep it stable it's nicer to have smaller sticks that you can lash to that's kind of big I can't really lash to the palm that easily without using a whole bunch of my cordage. Or I can make the whole thing freestanding, but then you gotta put diagonals in and stuff. 
I think if I had a property like this, I'd build myself some sort of a modern day Swiss Family Robinson home in the trees. When I'd come down to stay in Florida and be like up in my little tree fort for the entire time I was here. Making, making into some cowboy coffee here. Just no filter, nothing. Just dump in a bunch of grounds, make it strong, and then add a dash of cold water. Oh, that smells good. Right, coffee. There we go. Just a bit. Oh, that's good. That's good. Well, I'm gonna have my quiet time and then see about getting on building something. Today is uh, day two also of our 21 day fast. The church does that every year. Where we're fasting um, for up till Easter for a 21 day fast. And me being on the road I haven't really figured out what that was for me a lot of people like to fast like social media you know fasting you know uh, uh, fasting food for a certain meal of the day and I didn't actually pick something to fast all this being on the road and things I've been fasting I fasted breakfast but I was kind of already doing that I think maybe I'll do social media outside of work because of what this is what I do for work right like uh, sometimes I do have to post something or things like that but I don't have to go and do like I do and go on uh, Facebook marketplace when I go to my bathroom office or <laughs> to see if there's anything clever or new out there that jogs my mind into like oh this is some new oh maybe if I got a different pontoon boat uh, or a, uh, a jet boat or uh, this thing and, and it, it rarely comes to stuff and it's just kind of a little bit of a one of my only frivolous time wasters that I have outside of when I am home I do like to watch movies and stuff like that so like twice a week or something like that I might you know get be able to be done early enough to plunk down and watch a movie so I could still be in bed by nine o'clock you know so, I think for my 21 days, I'm going to no longer flip to Facebook. I'm going to use that time to pray for, well, friends, family, and you guys watching and stuff. That uh, God would just bless me with the, uh, the wisdom to make creative, fun videos that uh, don't waste your guys' time. And, and uh, I get to have fun, and you guys get to have fun watching them. And, and yeah. Right. Let's build something. I think right here will be good. I have a table. We incorporate this tree. It'll be a little bit hard, but that will keep it more stable. Stand right here, be able to work on things. Turn around, cooking on the fire, building my slingshot. Little view of the river and the stream. Yeah, now we just need some materials. Get some. I think I saw some straight stuff over here. Okay, now that might make a good table leg. Kind of dead. Great one. <gasps> that was close. Oh, 
Ah, tore my finger back open again. Dang it. Ah. No. Come on, I just wanted that to be healed. Yowza. I had to bandage my finger again. I, before I left, I had the, the sling rifle and I was strapping it into the truck and I had to expand it out to see if it would strap in better that way. And I had the band wrapped around the release to like make it not flap around. And I'm like, ah, okay, it doesn't fit. And I closed it and the receiver crushed on my finger. Fortunately, I'm a dad, so I got band-aids in my wallet, but it's, it hurts. All right, table, how do we do this? How do we do this? I'm only here for a couple days, so anything I build, if I don't ever come back again, it's just, well, somebody else will get to enjoy it, right? We need some legs to start with. Nice, sturdy legs. There's no big chunks of hardwood. I usually like to find a workbench to start with, like a big old block of wood that I can use for chopping on top of, so that'll make it a little difficult. stabilizes it nicely. Now, the top. Bit more work to peel them, but if I don't, because it's spring wood and the way it is peeling very easily means that it'll be a lashed pile of like broken off bark and it'll just be, the surface will be a mess in no time as soon as it dries out. Not for me while I'm here this time, but coming back would mean, or anybody else using this, it would be all kind of, it would ruin quicker. All right, gotta go get some more sticks that'll peel just like that. The rest of the stuff's all kind of dead, and if I lash that on there, same scenario. Like, it's just going to end up rotten uh, fairly quickly, so. Something just so satisfying. It's like peeling a sticker or something, you know? It's just that nice satisfying. Especially when you get one like this where you can just get coming around.
Ah, oh, this does not like to split. Huh. I thought maybe I could split a couple of them. But apparently not. It needs to be uh, cut all the way through almost. Whew. I guess that's not gonna work. They're kind of twisted. I was thinking I could double down. One more touch to this. I think I'm gonna take advantage of my little top here. And maybe I'll put that over there. I'll peel the rest of these by the fire tonight. Now I have a, the top of my picnic basket is a super stable little spot right here. I'll have to level these a little bit, but the rest of it turned out extremely level. Usually when I do these, if you end up lashing your table together, I don't worry too much. I go by eye, and if, if for some reason one corner is higher, like this one is a little bit low, I could simply pound these two down. So I'll, make, I'll probably nip those off and pound this one down and that one down and that one by just a, a touch. Yeah, maybe I'm just being too picky. This is pretty nice. I'll finish peeling the rest of these by the fire, but for now, I gotta run out and get the rest of my ingredients. Some more supplies and the sling rifle because she needs to be modified for fishing. Just over a year ago I set out to build my own sling rifle with the Glowforge laser. I ended up building all the parts and mechanisms for the trigger and the rail slides for the slingshot out of stuff I got from Harbor Freight. It ended up turning out really good. It shot 3 8 ammo and we were able to use it for some pigeon hunting. But like I said we're going to modify it this time and make it so it can shoot arrows so we can take it sling rifle fishing. Check out the link in the description below if you want to see that building of the sling rifle videos and the pigeon hunting with it. Cooler with some fruits. I found the nicest little fruit and vegetable stand. And then just down the road from that, there was a market for which I cannot pronounce the name of. And I didn't know if it was even a market because it had like a Spanish name for it. But I saw the word market, El Market or something. So I went in there and grabbed some real cool goodies for some of the other cooks. But right now, we got to, got to get our modification on. That's what got me the other day, because these slam all the way back and I had it clipped here and it came slamming back. So I extended it to go in the car like that and to see if it would fit. And then when I was like, oh, it doesn't fit, I had my finger right here and I hit these buttons here at the front. And because it was banded around there so this wasn't just flapping around, it goes bam. That was some serious, Ow, it still hurts. It's a week and some odd later here. Not infected though, that's important. I put some plantain on it. Makes everything better. For those of you that are new to medicinal plants, I'm not talking about the plantain that makes those delicious chips that you can get everywhere down here in the south. I'm talking about the broadleaf plantain. It's a weed that grows in your yard pretty much everywhere, north to south, all around the world. They look a little different in some places, but you chew that up, put that on a boo-boo. Its antiseptic qualities are better than anything you can buy at the pharmacy. Now, I'm gonna remove this and put a red dot site on, and then I gotta find somewhere to attach the reel, I think, on the side of it. Um, since I'll be holding it with my hand here like this, I think I gotta put the reel on this side so I'll fire and then be reeling with my left hand here. But the line will come around the front to the arrow, so we gotta put a whisker biscuit here to hold the arrow and then make a new set of bands in some way that that locks in and clips the band. So I might have to my spring on here that was originally here broke. All right, we got the flashlight that can go onto one of these rails. We got a rail, we got our arrow, fishing arrow here. And we got our red dot, whisker biscuit, whisper, whisker, whisker biscuit. I always thought it was a whisper biscuit. <laughs> that is not a whisper at all. And we got our reel. First things first, let's take that off. Put that away, we don't need that. 
So we need a rail on this side. Wow. The way those holes line up, it's almost like I planned it. <laughs> I can't, you can't make this up. Like, I mean, those, I didn't even have to drill a hole. I really wanted to do this at home before I left, but like, there's just so much going on. I, I couldn't, I couldn't find the time for it. And I figured, eh, it doesn't need that much equipment. I'll bring some screws. Joey packed me some assorted screws. He nailed it. The perfect sizes and all of it I needed here. I mean, that feels super secure, too. I don't want the reel ripping off. Let's see. Moment of truth. on a little bit awkward reeling wise but I think that's gonna be pretty good let's see how the whisper biscuit just leave the whisker does on here we got if I had had some little bolts line up right there I think. Let's see. That seems easy enough. Ah, uh, they're a little loose. I asked Joe to pack me two number tens. They're, he did, but these, well, maybe that would work. It's too short. The screw is just short. You know what? I'm just gonna steal a bolt from the back. Oh, the nut, is, there's just enough room. That is so, oop, lost my bit. Pretty straight, right there. Right, right, right there. And then, extended. I think we're looking good. I don't know, having this on the side might make it pull a little bit to one side, but I mean, I think it shoots so fast and at such a short distance, I don't see that throwing it off a lot, you know, having it maybe aligned above and below might be better. Just shoot it, just shoot it like, uh, and just shoot it like this. There we go, we're good. This is gonna work. It's gonna be awesome. You need a band. A little box of goodies. Simple Shot sent me. Simple Shot was the first company I ever started working with. Even before I went on a loan, they had sent me all the materials I needed to build my slingshot that I took out there with me during my survival challenge. And so now several years later, they're still one of our biggest sellers on FowlersMakerMischief.com, but we don't sell all of their unique items. So if you're really getting into the slingshot thing, you might wanna check out that link in the description below for Simple Shot. I mean, they have so many more options and so many more add-ons and different fun things. If you're starting to fall down the slingshot hole, check us out and check out Simple Shot because we believe every purchase should be the beginning of a new adventure for you. Can cutter. I like the sticker. Let's see, we got some crazy pouches. We want the thick latex, the .8 and the new slingshot is in here, but we'll reveal that in the next video. Today, we're shooting the point eight, some band tying on stuff. 
me this fun little, I like that. It's inside of a kind of a tube so you don't destroy it. That's really nice. Can't wait to shoot tomorrow, sight in the new slingshot. This is the, uh, which one is this? The Hammer XT or the Hammer something other? So, because it's got the, uh, you've seen me shoot these before, uh, shoot suckers with it. Honestly, it's probably a quicker way to do this than the sling rifle, you know, because you could just be like, boom, and done. Let's see, what happens if we just steal these? I don't know how to mount these. That might be the problem. I, that's why I wanted the, them to send me the .8. Maybe I should try. Because these got so much power to them. Let's, let's see. I mean, that would save me a lot of time. It'd be all done. If I, instead of making bands and then customizing and hacking this all apart, and I wouldn't be able to use this again if I wanted to use the hammer, say, I managed to put the flashlight to it and I'm just walking down the stream and I want to just bink a gar for breakfast or something. How? Well, one, will this stay in here? In the, the pinch? That's our first question. No, it doesn't. That is a problem. And two, how do we put the tubes onto the end of here? I mean, if I just stuck them underneath of that and just clamped it down, I mean, it's, I think that might do it. Yeah, if I put a piece of ammo on the ends of each of these to protect against it popping out of being clamped in and then just seizing this like around and turning that into some sort of a little tied off ball that would do it let's see if we can make that happen a little piece of wood might be easier yeah I think a little scrap of wood thing Like some random leaf thing just come flying out of there nowhere. Now I just have to hold still for five minutes while the glue sets up. <laughs> well, that dries. Let's see about our red dots. Wow, it's really pretty. Honestly, I don't know if it's even going to end up high enough because of the stuff at the end. Yeah, it kind of lines up right behind everything. Yeah, it's not really worth putting it on there. Like, it just it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be looking at the butt of the arrow. I won't even be able to see past it. I'll just end up being, like, looking over it. No point. Bummer. All right, with another riser though, I could change that and stuff. And I think that would almost be cooler for it when I'm out, like if I was to go out slingshot hunting, especially if I uh, had a riser and I got like an arrow on there and uh, try and get a bore with it or something like that. Really load this thing up with as much power as it can handle and put a nice arrow on here and get like a, you know, 45, 50 pound draw and just be like, boom. Let's unwrap this and see if it'll, it's gonna work. I'll keep it taped up so it stays glued as tight as possible. Maybe even leave it taped up. Lock on my arrow. Put it in my little knock holder thingy. Yeah, that'll work. Oh yeah, that's secure. There's 
no way that's going anywhere. I don't know why, but if this feels sketchier to me than uh, its first iteration where I was just shooting slingshot ammo. You ever seen those uh, those clips of people, you know, pictures of bow and arrow mess ups, like the arrow breaks in half because they're shooting these really heavy duty compounds and the arrow just like snaps in the middle and then half of the arrow just goes through their arm somehow and uh, all that power's got to go somewhere. This thing's going to be pretty darn powerful. That's it. I mean, that's, we're done. We're done. I mean, just have to attach the string to the arrow and make sure I don't screw it up. That's one thing about the, uh, you forget to hit the reel. And uh, that can be a bit annoying. All right. It's loaded. Goes back in between here. The trigger is pushed forward. <sighs> I'm a little hesitant. I'm a little hesitant. I'm trying to think of everything that could go wrong. So before I cock it, everything breaks, goes forward. The little bit of bands that could snap or come out of the front come flapping back. <sighs> I think I'm okay. Wow, that draw power is so much more than, than it was when it was a slingshot thing. All right, let's try it. Ah, nothing. It sticks. I might have to manually squeeze it if I can't get that trigger working better. Ugh. She shoots, she scores. Boom, quack a lack of two points in downtown. Let's give it a try again. I'm like, do it in the safety squint. Ah. All kinds of stuff jumping around up there, getting antsy, it's getting scared watching me do this. Like, I'm getting scared. Ah, the trigger does not work. Pinch in the top does work. Wonder if I could add some new latex wrapping around there, tighten her up. I gotta get some dinner ready before I go. Make some gator tacos. Do it the Greg way with a lighter. Always bring a lighter. some of this TheraBand. That stuff's been sitting on there stretched the entire time, so if we replace this, maybe we can get it tighter. A little bit of a delay, but it does it. to dry fire too much but oh yeah tuned it all tuned up she's good to go all right gator tacos for dinner and a night of sling bow fishing this is gonna be awesome this is so cool how cool is this thing this is this is too cool all right what's for dinner tortillas mango salsa I purchased cabbage, a little bit of salsa that I have left over from my salsa I made last night. Those look good. 
a little bit on the crisp side on the outside. My oil is a little bit, a little bit on the hot side. Ha, hot, hot, ooh. I'm gonna get onto that one. Just gotta go for it. Don't be a sissy. Yes, got it. Ooh, ooh, done, done. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, oh, ha, ah, chuck it over there. Ah, ah, there we go. Whew, those are hot. Just right. I think we got our gator bites. I'm gonna rip them up a little bit so that way they, oh, look at them. Gator bites. Oh, that's hot. Still hot. Ow, ouch, ouch. A little bit of red onions. Do one with a little bit of lemon. The rest of my fresh salsa. Oops, maybe I should have poured the juice off first. There we go. This one with some cabbage. A nice mango salsa I picked up. Ooh, that looks good. Oh, and a little bit of that gator sauce. This was also at that store there, so this must be a staple from the area. It, it's pretty good. A little stream of sour cream down the middle. And done. All right, yeehaw. Lord, thank you for this food and this beautiful day in your creation, Florida. Bless tonight's hunt and may we all be safe and just enjoy the bounty of your creation. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, first the one with my salsa. Mmm. Oh. Mmm. That's what I should have done last night. I should have had tortillas. What a difference. I feel like right now I'm thinking like everything I eat from the rest of my life should just be on tortillas. I just make it and put it on a tortilla with some fixings. It's like, that's so good. Well, last night was okay, like the, but like, you know, trying to get a bit of everything on top of each bite, it was silly. I was like doing it backwards and upside down and wrong. Like the tortillas the, or the taco shell, that's the, that's the food holder of the better than spoons. Mmm. Move the cabbage in there, that's really good too. Just like a fish taco, you got that crunch. You got that gator and the crunchy, like fried chickeny flavor. I think I like my orange stuff, fresh orange stuff, a little bit better though. That was, it was pretty good. If I ever lose the desire to continue to make YouTube videos, I could make the heck of a food cart, man. Maybe just become a, a snowbird. Come down here, make gator tacos. No, oh, hmm, wouldn't that be the inverse? Come down here and with my lobster connections up in Maine, make lobster rolls fresh for Florida people. And then would people just be like so turned off by like that? You think? What do you think? Would it like be like such a super epic turnaround? Affordable, delicious homemade lobster rolls. Uh, and then up in Maine, you make delicious gator tacos or something like that. So it's like completely opposite. Although I think, you know, Florida people tend to still, I've been in restaurants here and you can get lobster, but it's, it's like a hundred dollars a pound or something ridiculous. I got it going though. I got to pack it up and get to Chris, our guide and host and uh, show him what this thing can do. Sling bow fishing versus bow fishing. I, I already tell you who's going to win. <laughs> it's not the sling bow. <laughs> 
but we'll get some fish with it for sure. Or maybe, maybe it'll turn out to be the most epic thing ever, but I think it's just gonna turn out to be pretty darn cool and pretty darn fun. Hey, pup. How's it going? What do you think? Oh, oh, you wanna play? All right, we are up here at the front of the property. And uh, these are all the guide toys over here. And I got another boat over there. This is our boat for tonight. Check this thing out. Look at that. With the, I love that. The controls on the front here. Navionics or something. Garmin. And uh, and the lights on the side for the bow fishing. And check out these crazy the motors there. So they're like right flush with the bottom. So I'm curious to see. This thing looks like it rips. And they already got some bows in here that they're going to be shooting with. And uh, if everything doesn't go well with the sling rifle, I still like to do a couple with the bow too. So I've never shot a uh, bow, one of these fishing bows. I'm just gonna get out there and have some fun. It's a two hour drive, so let's go. That's Noah on the boat right there, and Chris is driving the boat. If you'd like to charter a bow fishing charter, check them out. Seminole Prairies, FloridaHuntingRanch.com. They also do all kinds of other hunts. You're going to want to check it out if you want to get on some really awesome adventures. All fish seem to like it right under the edge of a tree, right? You get the tilapia. A little gar. There we go. About time. You want me to put that in the cooler? Heck yeah. Just shy. pretty good too. The old armored catfish. I love catfish. I wanted one. Yeehaw. New species unlocked. Happy with that. It only took like two hours, but I got one. Back there. All right. right there. Oh man, that got him. I got him too much on the side there. Went through the side. How about that? Shot? So I'm saying that's a, they're called the bullseye snakehead because of the they all got that spot right on the tail. All right. Nice fish. Got him. Got him. Ha ha. That's a nice one. There we go. 
Now we're on to three. Three new species for me. Tilapia. Right through the guts, gross. Well, we got two and a half. The little block that I have, I need to make a little nylon block or something. Because it wore out, so it just pops out of there and fires all on its own now. Alright, then huh. this just goes on that bottom side, obviously. Yep. You just use your pointer finger, middle finger, whichever one feels most comfortable. Then use your right hand to reel that in. You want to reel your slack in. So as long as that thing ain't pulled back, it's shooting. Ah, uh, yeah. Gotcha. You want to shoot? See him right down that rock? Go right over him. There we go. That's a good one. Woo! It's huge. Size of my arm. My first one with the bow. Not too shabby. Happy with that. Now he's, what? Not he's, he's moving, he's just tired from being upside down. What we got? You gonna go for it? He's a crusty old one. Yeah, he's been there for a minute. There you go, buddy. Is there a good deed for the day? That's right. <laughs> Big one. Look at the size of that compared to my head. It's like it's it's as big as I am. That's it. Twelve, fifteen. Not too shabby. Kids in there? Yeah. Four yeah. of them? Two. Two clown knife. I think we only got one. What? No, it just uh, shoots got... everything and gets most of it. <laughs> I tried, so. I run a G-Rex and get the custom color. I think it's yeah. pretty sweet. And then I run the boondock reel yeah. with a Gargod reel seat. And shooting and it And this I had never seen before. Yes, sir. And you guys found somebody that makes these? Yeah, at a Pennsylvania boondock outdoors. Yeah. So it's a new, it's almost like a dummy proof. You're getting into bow fishing. Chris just bought them and I just, oh, first time seems, using them tonight. It seems genius. It's the best, I mean, you can't break it. This yeah. is the only way you set your drag so you ain't gonna worry about clicking a button, your arrow never falls out. As long as you pull this back and reel, you got your drag without it, you can sit there and crank all you want and yeah. get line and don't do nothing until you pull that drag. Yeah. Uh, stick of work with me, I'm done. We got two hours drive still. It doesn't. Doesn't get shorter one or the other way back. Oh, something got into my stuff. And I got visited by the raccoons. Got into my old dark, or my pita pockets. My old pita pockets. Look at that. He was trying to pull stuff out from the side of it. Messing my little picnic basket up. Oh, there he is right there. I can see his eyes. Hey, buddy. I see you. What are you? Are you a big old raccoon or what? You look like a big cat. You're the fattest raccoon I've ever seen. <coughs> I don't think I could take a raccoon my slingshot right now. Get a little fire going for a little bit. See if that keeps him away for the night. Alright, we got a fish. 
we're gonna eat the uh, I'm gonna eat the uh, tilapia tonight. Give that a try for the first time ever. And uh, oh, got a plantain. We gonna fry up that. Man, this thing's a beast. I don't know. It's a couple pounds. Two pounder. Yeah. Let's see what we can do. Yep. There's the Everglades seasoning. Give that a try. Got some of that swamp gator sauce and have a plantain and we'll throw it on top of a oh a little bed of rice and a, maybe some tortillas to shovel it in. That should be good. I have a green tomato. It's a little on the yellow side, but it's still a green tomato. I'm gonna do a little fried green tomatoes and grilled tilapia with the Everglades seasoning. Woo! This should be delicious. Probably gonna draw the raccoon back in, the smell of this. For sure, right? Let's see how these guys do. Never done a tilapia. Feels like a pretty thick cut. That's enough for me. One big fillet from one side. I'll uh, put that back in the cooler that for tomorrow's breakfast or something with the rest of the fish. I don't know how I'm going to eat them all. There's a pretty heavy bloodline in this thing. Get some of that bloodline off of there. It tends to make it not as good, but I don't know never done tilapia I just know that almost every other fish you cut that away as much as possible there we go most of it's gone I'll throw this in the fire to hopefully keep down on the smell oh yeah It looks like a piece of yellow styrofoam. Not exactly a, like a, oh yeah. I guess, I mean, it needs to be cooked though. The top of it's like a coconut right there. There's some like woodiness. Hmm. Try doing it right in half down the middle. Catch and cook batter on the tomatoes. All right, I think we're ready. There we go. All right. Lord, 
thank you for this food. Plus this food in my body. Help me to get a good night's sleep. So I can get up early and get on that rabbit. In Jesus' name. Amen. I feel like I really earned this uh, meal now. Not just staying up so late to get it. And now... Oh, I didn't even remember to toast my tortilla. I'm so fried. Mmm. Big, meaty bite. Full of flavor. Mmm. That's so good. And the little fried green tomato. That's really good. I feel like I need some sort of a... Uh, maybe I shouldn't have put the sour cream on these and I should have been dipping the fried green tomatoes in the sour cream or something. Such an easy fish to... to bow fish. You know. I feel like if you have a good headlamp in any sort of boat and you're just cruising along and you had some sort of another lamp that was general, I mean... You could do it fairly inexpensively. And, uh, or you could get really carried away and become a real master at the trait. And, like, those guys with that boat was so sick. Hmm. I love a fried green tomato. Let's try the plantain. It's more like a starchy, like, potato. It needs, like, a, a yogurt now that it's fried up to, like, dip it in, like, a sweet yogurt of some sort. Like a, an orange or a clementine or, or something yogurt would be pretty cool. I don't know what. I like the plantain chip, so I thought, you know. Frying up some of that. Maybe it would bring the sugars out of it and it tastes good, but that's boring. Super boring as it is. There's got to be a recipe or something that makes that taste better. I'm going to make sure I do my best to burn up the rest of my food scraps, the plates, anything that might smell as much as possible. And pack it in for the night. Hopefully the... Uh, Fresh fire and all that stuff keeps the raccoon away. Oops, I just threw my plantain away. I could live without the rest of that. All right, I'm splurging. I got the zero breeze, the crew attend. I didn't put the insulated liner in there, but let's see if it cooled it off. It's been on for three minutes. It's 70 something degrees outside. Oh, it's cold in here. It's so nice. <laughs> oh, that is so nice. So, so nice. I'm going to get to bed. Got some rabbit hunting for the morning. Still got plenty of fish to try. I haven't tried out yet. Get on trying the uh, snakehead and the armored catfish. I wonder if that armored catfish tastes as good as the catfish I really like. It's weird that they all like look down on them. Somebody else told me it tastes good, though. And if it tastes as good as catfish the way I always love catfish then I know what I'm going after next time. Who cares about the rest of them? But I also hear the snakehead is really good too, so maybe that's a little bit like cusp or burbot, because it kind of looks like that, which would be awesome. And uh, rabbit, if we get it with the slingshot. So I'll see you guys in tomorrow's adventure. Tune in next time. Fowler out. Special thanks to Seminole Prairies, Chris and Noah. Thank you guys so much for getting me on the fish today. Check them out, linked in the description below if you want to uh, get on your own adventure like this, floridahuntingranch.com.